let's work through an example of inference procedures for one proportion. We've looked at this example previously. A telephone poll of 1,000 adult Americans, 440, said they approve of the way the president is handling his job. These types of polls are done very, very frequently, and they typically talk to about 1,000 people. And 440 people in the sample of 1,000 said they approve. So our P hat, the sample proportion, is 440 over 1,000 or 0 0.44. That's the proportion in the sample. P hat, the sample proportion, estimates P, the population proportion, the real value of the parameter for the entire population. We've got our sample proportion, we've got our N, and if we want a confidence interval for P, we've worked through this problem before to get our formula. And it's just our sample proportion plus and minus the margin of error, which is made up of the Z value times the standard error as per usual. And our standard error is found over here. This is our standard error formula. And so we can figure this out. Our standard error of our sample proportion P hat is just going to be the square root of our sample proportion, which is 0 0.44 times 1 minus the sample proportion over N, which is 1,000. And if you throw all of that into your calculator, you'd see that this is 0 0.0157. So the standard error of our sample proportion is 0 0.0157, rounded to four decimal places. And now this is quite easy to actually do this calculation. We simply start off with our sample proportion, and we add and subtract the appropriate Z value. And I'm hoping you know that the appropriate Z value for a 95% interval is 1.96. And we simply multiply by that standard error. And this works out to 0 0.44 plus and minus the margin of error of 0 0.031. Or if we actually carried out the subtraction, 0 0.409 to 0 0.041. Four seven one. It is a 95% confidence interval for P, for P, the parameter P, so we can be 95% confident that the parameter P lies within that interval. What does that mean in the context of this problem? It means that we can be 95% confident that if all adult Americans were contacted in this manner, between 40.9% and 47.1% would say they approve of the way the president is handling his job. Let's go ahead now and do a hypothesis test. So the same example here, we've got our P hat, as we've worked out before, is 0 0.44. But let's say there was a value of interest to us that we wanted to test. And something that we might want to test here is to test the null hypothesis that the true proportion P is 0.5. And let's say we thought an appropriate alternative was that it is actually less than 0.5. So we're going to test the null hypothesis that the real value of your population proportion is 0 0.5 against the alternative hypothesis that it is in fact less than 0 0.5. Here we've got the information that we need, and we're going to carry out our hypothesis test. We've got our null hypothesis that p is equal to 0.5, our alternative that p is less than 0.5, our z statistic that we developed in the earlier video, and the standard error. And our standard error for our hypothesis test is a little bit different from that of the confidence interval, and let's calculate that first. The standard error under the null hypothesis of our sample proportion p hat is going to be the square root of our hypothesized value of p, not the sample proportion, the hypothesized value of p times 1 minus that over the sample size. And our standard error works out to be 0 0.0158. Very, very similar to the one we saw in the confidence interval, but a little bit different in that fourth decimal place. Now we can just go ahead and calculate our z statistic. Our z statistic is equal to our sample proportion minus the hypothesized value over the standard error of the sample proportion. And this works out to minus 3.79. So we draw out our normal curve, standard normal distribution, zero in the middle, and minus 3.79 is way out there somewhere. So it's quite a bit out in the left tail, giving a fair bit of evidence against the null hypothesis just looking at it, but we need a p-value. And our alternative hypothesis is that P is less than 0.5, less than 0.5. And so our p-value is simply the area out here to the left. That is our p-value, the area 
out to the left. If you go to a table, you could find out that that value is very small. You might find the real value depending on your table, but it's quite far out there, so sometimes tables don't go up that far. But if we threw it into a computer, we'd also see that our p-value could see that it is 7 times 10 to the negative 5, or in other words, 0 0.00007. A very small p-value, very strong evidence against this null hypothesis and in favor of this alternative hypothesis. So there is very strong evidence that the real value of p, the parameter for the entire population, is actually less than 0.5. What does that mean in the context of this problem? It means that there is very strong evidence with that p-value of 0 0.00007 that the true proportion of all adult Americans who would say they approve is actually less than 0 0.5.